The next question is from Muhammad Sheikh Chicago, USA. What are the virtues of Arafah? Due to limited time, I did not cover the more details of Arafah except one important detail. But the next question is asking me to mention the virtues of Arafah. So Alhamdulillah, Allah has given me more time to spend on this topic. Again, the virtues of Arafah, you can spend hours together discussing it. I will just mention seven important points of the virtues of Arafah. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Burj, chapter number 85, verse number 3, wa shahidu wa mashud, by the witnessing day and by the witness day. Here Allah is taking oath of the witnessing day referring to Friday and the witness day referring to Yom al-Arafah. And if you read the hadith in Jami Tirmidhi, volume number 6, hadith number 3339, the beloved Prophet said that when Allah speaks about the Yom al-Mashud, the witness day, Allah is referring to Yom al-Arafah. And when Allah is referring to a shahid the witnessing day, Allah is referring to Friday. So according to this hadith in Jami Tirmidhi, we realize that when Allah says in Surah Buruj, chapter number 85, Allah is taking oath in verse number 3, by the witnessing day referring to Friday and by the witnessed day, Allah is referring to Yom al-Arafah. Allah is taking oath of Yom al-Arafah. Further is mentioned in the hadith of Muslim Ahmad, hadith number 2455, that the Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings out the children of Adam from their loins on the day of Arafah. And he asked them the question that who is your Lord? And then the same thing is mentioned. Allah says in Surah Araf chapter number 7, verse number 172 and 173 that Allah brings out from the loin of Adam, the children of Adam and ask them that who is your Lord, who is your Rabb? And all the children of Adam, they bear witness that Allah is the Rabb. And Allah says, so that on the day of judgment, you will not say that I did not know who is my Lord. Or you will not say that my parents, they used to do idol worship. So this excuse will not be accepted. Here it's mentioned in the Hadith of Musa Ahmad, also as in the Quran, in Surah Araf, chapter 7, verse 172 and 173, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings out from the law and the children of Adam and asks them, and they bear witness that Allah is their Rabb, Allah is their Lord. It's further mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, point number one, Hadith number 45, that once a Jew approaches Hazrat Umar radiallahu an, the second caliph of Islam, and says, O chief of the believers, if what was revealed in your scripture was revealed in our scriptures, we would have celebrated it as an Eid, a day of festival. So Umar Adilawan asked the Jew, which verse are you referring to? So then the Jew quotes Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 3, on this day have I perfected your religion for you and I have chosen for you Islam and I have completed my favor on you. Hazrat Umar Adilawan, he says, this day we know it was revealed to the Prophet on a Friday on Yom al Arafah. That means this day, the day this verse was revealed, Surah Maida chapter 5, verse number 3, and most of the Mufassirin say this is the last verse of the Quran that was revealed. It was revealed to the Prophet on Yom al Arafah. And it says that this day have I perfected religion for you and have chosen for you Islam and complete my favor on you. It is further mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, point number three, hadith number 2419, that the Prophet said, Yomul Arafa, Yomul Nahar, and Ayyamul Tashriq. That means the ninth day of Dil Hajj, Yomul Arafa, and Yomul Nahar, the Idul Adha. And the three days following Ayyamul Tashriq are the days of festival, are the days of Eid, the days of eating and drinking. Those people who are doing Hajj, for them on the Yomul Arafah, 
Yawmul Arafa is Hajj according to the Prophet. And it is like Eid. It is the day of feasting and drinking and eating. And people who are doing Hajj, they should not fast from Yawmul Arafa. The fasting which I mentioned in my early answer is only for those who are not doing Hajj. But those who are doing Hajj, it is not recommended for them to fast. It is the day of Eid, day of eating and drinking. It is further mentioned in Sunan An Nasai, Hadith number 3006, that the Prophet said that there is no day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees his slaves, male and female, more than the day of Arafah. That means on this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees the maximum of the people from hellfire, male and female. And this day is the best day of forgiveness. So Yom al Arafah, the last 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the best days in the full year and Yom al Arafah is the best day of the year, without doubt. Like the best night of the year is Laylatul Qadr, the best day of the year is Yom al Arafah. Allah frees the maximum of slaves from the hellfire, male and female. It's the best day of forgiveness. It's further mentioned in Jam Tirmidhi, hadith number 3585, where the Prophet said that Yom al Arafah is the best day and the best dua to be done on this day is La ilaha illallah wa adahu la sharika lo lal mulku lal hamdu ala kulli shay'in qadeer that there is no part but Allah he has got no partners to him belongs everything all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has power over all things this dua according to the prophet is the best dua and during Yawm al-Arafah doing this dua as much as you can it is recommended you can do during all these 10 days, but during Yom al Arafah specifically, this dua the Prophet recommended and said that if you do the dua, it's the best dua. And the seventh virtue, the last, which I mentioned in my early answer also, that it is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number three, hadith number 2747, that the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that fasting on the day of Arafah expiates your sins of the previous year and the next year. Your previous year and the next year sins are forgiven if you fast on Yom al Arafah. So inshallah, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah will be starting very soon after 4 or 5 days and Yom al Arafah inshallah will come after about 2 weeks and we see to it that we do as much as the Sunnah and we revive the Sunnah and we do the good deeds in the 10 days of Dhul as well as specifically on your Malafa. Hope that's true.